Hello everyone, welcome to Future Cities Lab podcast. Here in Singapore, I'm your host, Thandi. Hello everyone, welcome to Future Cities Lab podcast. Here in Singapore, I'm your host, Tanvi. We've all heard of how companies use our mobile phone data for targeted advertising. Mobile phone data has recently also drawn a lot of attention in the research community as an alternative data source that can be useful to plan cities. At the same time, we are constantly plagued by a fear of data misuse and privacy breaches. Today, we will talk about the promise of positive use of mobile phone data as a method to improve transport planning and how we can alleviate our fears regarding data privacy. I'm here today with Kwal Temok Anda, a data scientist and urban computing engineer here in Future Cities Laboratory. In his ongoing PhD research, he's using machine learning and artificial intelligence to improve transport planning. Welcome, Temo. Hello, Tanvi. Thanks for the invitation. My first question to you, Temo, is how is mobile phone data related to transport planning? This is a very good question and one that I didn't have the answer even before starting my PhD work. So it is very important first to define what is exactly this mobile phone data. So we are not talking here about the data that is being collected from the apps that you have installed on your phone, neither the data coming from the different sensors in your phone, like the accelerometers, gyroscope or GPS, but it's the data that comes from the telecommunications network. What exactly do you mean by data from telecommunication network? So the way the telecommunications network work is by they distribute across a region, let's say a city, an array of antennas. These antennas are sometimes called mobile phone towers. And each of these towers or antennas cover a specific area in the city. And they need to be in constant communication with your mobile phone device. So whenever you're receiving a call, sending a message or connecting to the internet, they need to know where is your location so they can transmit the information there. By doing this process, a timestamp is left on this network and then in such a way that if you sort this timestamp by user, by mobile phone user, then you would see a trace of how the mobile phone user was moving across the city during one day, for example. So that's why it's a type of data that has a lot of potential to be used in transport planning. But I believe mobile phone data is a very new source of data in transport planning, right? And also it's very hard to procure. Do we really need mobile phone data? What are the type of sources that planners use today to study travel patterns? So traditionally, when we want to do transport planning, the main tool is to use household travel surveys. These surveys only cover 1% of the population and they are done every four to five years. And also some other drawback, for example, is that they are based on what people are reporting. So many, many times people miss, for example, to report some trips. And because it's a manual collection process, then actually these type of surveys are expensive and are an important investment by some governments. More recently, we have other type of data coming from the public transport. Sometimes whenever you want to get in or off, you can use your smart card to do so. Whenever you're using this type of of smart card in a public transport system, this information, not only you pay with this, but then this information is recorded and used to analyze the travel demand specifically for the public transport. The drawbacks here is that it, it doesn't tell you exactly what was the origin of your trip or the real destination. So if you want to solve problems like the first mile, last mile problem that we call in transportation, then this data is just not enough. On the other hand, we have mobile phone data, and this mobile phone data tells you the movement patterns of people throughout every day, and they cover a huge extent of the population, depending on the market share of the telecommunications operator. Normally, it's around 25 to 60% of the population. So this type of data is very useful because then it's also being collected already. So it's just a matter of how to bring this into the transport planning uh, domain uh, and exploit this further. So I get that mobile phone data is high resolution, higher accuracy, cheaper in some ways, but it's still very personal data. And 
I'm very skeptical about the ways in this in which this data will be used. And there's something very unsettling about the thought that there's a large tech company out there that knows what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, even if it's only to make my travel experience better. Are the current industry standard methods of data protection and anonymization entirely safe? Some years ago, when mobile phone data started drawing the attention of transport researchers, it seems sufficient to anonymize this type of data set by deleting, for example, the mobile phone number and some other personal information, and then substitute this with a random personal identifier. But we quickly came to notice that this was not just enough, that even if you were doing this, you could still be able to identify people that were behind that mobile phone trace. So you mean you can re-identify an exact person using an anonymized data? What do you mean? Exactly. Let's make a quick exercise to understand this better. Imagine that you have this type of mobile phone data available for one day. And somehow you're interested to take a closer look in an area which has a boxing gym. Then you look at the, at the timestamps left there from 7 to 8 p.m., and then you realize that there are 30 mobile phone users that actually were in this boxing gym around this time. Then you go to social media, let's say Instagram, and then you look for posts with the hashtag of this boxing gym, and then you found one, one that was done exactly in between 7 to 8 p.m. Then you go to the profile of this person, and then you have the name. With the name, you, you can go, for example, to Google or LinkedIn and try to find where this person works and you find where the person works. Then at this point, you know that you have 30 people that were in the boxing gym between seven and eight, and then you want to know from these people if there is one that works at the location you, you just found. And then you found that maybe it's just one person. At this point, you have already identified who is the person behind this anonymized mobile phone data uh, trace. That's a very scary story. So clearly, I don't want to use my individual mobile phone data. So can mobile phone data still be useful for transport planning? This was the hard question for, for the PhD, because we want to take advantage of these new type of big data sources available. But on the other hand, we also don't want to compromise users' privacy. So how can we still make this useful for, for example, transport planning? The th solution that we thought was to design some type of AI machine learning model that can be able to learn from this data some the mobility patterns, for example, some other rules that you can see in the data in such a way that this model can be able to generate new synthetic data in such a way that the new data will relate to alternative digital population that will move in the same ways as the real one. Some people call this digital twin or doppelganger uh, and the idea is that by creating these digital twins or doppelgangers, that, that none of them can be matched back to a real person. So to back up a bit, this synthetic population, this uh, doppelganger that you're creating, their travel patterns match those in a real city? Exactly. That's one of the objectives. We, what we want to make sure is that these new synthetic mobility patterns we are creating, they should match with the real ones. For example, we want to... We want to match like at what time do people travel, how long is the duration of people's activities, and we also want to know that our synthetic population is in the correct areas of the city at the correct times. And of course, there is a series of histograms that, that, we, that we match, but there's other part of, of histograms that, that we are not able to match. And it's because if we were matching everything accurately enough, then it would be the same as having the same original data and then you still have there the privacy risk. So there's always, you have to have some part of randomness that covers the participation of the real users. So our expectation is to generate data that is useful enough to give us better insights into the effect of, for example, transport policies or changes in the infrastructure, but still without compromising users' privacy. That sounds like a more positive outlook than what we started with. And my final question to you then is, what is your personal outlook on the use of mobile phone data for transport planning in the future city? So the difficult part of using mobile phone data for transport planning is that, as we have discussed, is that this data uh, comes from the telecommunication companies. These companies, they need to comply with recent data protection privacy regulations. 
In Europe, we have the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation. In the case of Singapore, we have the Personal Data Protection Act. So we still haven't figured out what are the correct mechanisms in which we can make this type of data available to other domains without compromising people's privacy. So to close this gap, we are proposing our solution that not only generates realistic synthetic data, but we are also adopting the privacy by design approach. This privacy by design approach means that you are taking into consideration privacy as the first step when you are developing new technology and not as a post-process step later on. In our case, this means that the type of AI models that we use, they only require user aggregated data. This makes it a lot easier, for example, transport planners to request this from telecommunication companies. And in this case, everyone will be complying with the data privacy regulations. So we hope that by doing this, mobile phone data can be easily shared and really become a tool that can help us plan better transportation systems. Well, I for one am all for privacy by design, and this has been a very enlightening discussion for me, Temo. Thank you for coming here and talking to us. Thanks, Tambi.